Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Mayur. I'm the founder and CEO here at Arcana. At Arcana, we like to think of ourselves as being in the business of abstractions. We've been doing abstractions since 2021. We started out doing wallet abstractions where we were hiding private keys and seed phrases from users, uh, just making it simple for them to kind of use Web3 applications, which we all know has been quite the friction point. Uh, we moved on to doing gas abstractions, allowing users to basically interact with applications more seamlessly. And now, more logically, we moved over to chain abstraction, which we feel is going to be the, the big unlock, really, for the whole of Web3 and crypto. So, uh, I mean, you're, you're going to listen to a whole bunch of really great speakers here today talk about chain abstraction and all the cool stuff that it can do. Uh, I'm here primarily to talk about like the downstream effects of it and why this is probably pound for pound the, the most exciting space to be in in crypto right now. Uh, for those of you who've been following along, you'll probably be able to appreciate a lot of the stuff that I'm going to cover today. For those of you who've not been really following along on what chain abstraction is, uh, we're going to actually raw dog it today and, and do an actual live demo. No video, no recordings, we just do a live demo right here today so you guys can see and feel what it looks like. Because that's when I think you really come around to appreciating what is really possible and what chain abstraction can make happen. So uh, yeah, and then let's go. So cool. Um, what we have here is uh, the Arcana wallet. The Arcana wallet is our GTM product. It, what it does is basically it has the Arcana SDK, which exposes the Arcana's uh, chain abstraction protocol. As you can see, this is, this is actually a simple EOA wallet, just like MetaMask. Nothing very different, except that as you can see here on the top right, there is no chain selector, right? So this is one of the first things you'll start to see is different in chain abstraction land. So no chain selector, you don't, the, as a user, chains are completely hidden away from you. The next important thing that you start to see is my asset balances are actually going to get aggregated for me across chains. So I have a bunch of ETH here that I have across three different chains. I have some USDC here, which is what we'll be using in this demo here today on OP and Arbitrum, and it aggregates these balances. But what's Aggregating this and showing this to users is one thing. Allowing them to spend it as one is a whole other. So we are on Aave right here. And as you can see, we are on Aave's uh, uh, arbitrum market. And what you can do with chain abstraction is basically tell Aave that I want to be able to supply the entirety of my USDC balance that I actually hold across two different chains over here on Aave, although I'm just on the Arbitrum market, right? So if you actually go here and see, I, I have only about 0.5 USDC on Arbitrum, but Aave here thinks I have 10.77. And typically, I, sh I would not be able to supply this USDC uh, more than 0.5 of it without bridging. But let's try and see what happens, right? So. Uh, okay, I hit supply. There is no way that I would be able to do anything like 10 USDC. I simply don't have it without actually bridging, but not with Arcana. So with Arcana, you can just hit supply, but yeah, sometimes Aave makes funny things. This is what happens. This is the risk with actually doing live demos but we're going to make it happen. I hit supply, and yeah, it should work this time. So the Arcana wallet shows the user this intent screen, which says, oh, you have about 10.7 USDC on two different chains. You want to spend 10 USDC on Arbitrum, and for a fee, we'll make it happen. And me as a user, I just simply need to hit one button, and my intent gets verified. The liquidity that I'm missing, the 9.5 USDC that I'm missing on Arbitrum, will actually get supplied to me using my USDC balance on Optimism. And once that liquidity gets supplied, my transaction gets submitted to Aave all in one click and in about 18 seconds, right? So I didn't have to go to a bridge. I didn't have to move assets. My assets could have been fragmented across multiple chains. 
I just had to click one button, wait 18 seconds, and voila, I'm done. It, as you can see here, it ended up using my USDC balance on OP. It spent all of whatever I had on Arbitrum, and we were able to kind of make this happen all through chain abstraction. Pretty cool, I'd say. So yeah, we, we always like to do this. We want to show, and then we'll talk about the things. So now that you guys have seen what is really possible, and this we can make happen on literally any app, in Web3 today, uh, you know, one click, fast experiences. But what it really is, is unifying these user balances across different chains, allowing these users to spend these unified balances anywhere they want to, and to do so near instantly. If you combine these three, is when you are able to actually deliver a 10x jump in user experience. If you're not doing, if you're doing some combination of these three things, then it's going to be subpar, and it's not something that users will really flock to or want to do. But if you do all three, you're going to deliver the 10x experience. And when you deliver a 10x user experience jump, that doesn't come without side effects. That, that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't come without causing ripples in the so-called matrix. So what are these things that happen, right? So the people and these so-called ripples affect three different categories. Category one is, of course, users and the user experience, as you guys would have seen just now. You know, from going into a process that would take me tens of minutes, multiple clicks, context shifts, to doing something literally in the click of a button in a matter of a few seconds. That is a 10x jump in the user experience. But what it leads to is, Essentially, I know this is the meme mass adoption, but this is why I say this is the real unlock. Because this is the only thing out there that can actually make this happen. Why? Because crypto natives will actually really, really like this. Because effectively, it allows them to aggregate balances, spend them as one, removes the friction of needing to bridge each time you want to spend assets. I'm sure many of you have wallets right here. And you probably open them up and switch to a particular chain, and you'll suddenly find some USDC, USDT sitting there, and you don't even know how it got there. Right? So this is what we can try and sort of eliminate in a sense where you now see everything across all chains, and you're able to kind of spend it. Crypto noobs, new entrants will also like it because it feels very familiar. It's very Web2. Right? So it's me going to Amazon using a payment gateway, using my international card to make a payment, no matter where I am in the world, be able to buy a product and get it delivered to me, again, in a matter of a few clicks, waiting for a few seconds, for a payment processor to just abstract it all away and just make things happen for me. And essentially, apps and chains will also like this, because what all of this effectively means is that there's going to be more users coming into the space and spending more money than they could before just by virtue of having easier access to their monies. And this we've seen happen in the past in traditional finance once we digitized money and made it very easy for people to spend. OK, so we're saying the user experience is great. Users are going to kind of you know, start flocking over to the space. What does this mean for developers and the apps that they build? Right, so what's the effect? What's the downstream effect of that? So now, typically what developers need to do at the start of building anything that they want to build is pick the chain that they want to build it on or decide if they want to build their own chain. And these are you know, these weird TVL games that you have to end up playing. You have to figure out, oh, which chain has users right now? What's hot? Who has more TVL? Who has more liquidity? And this starts to kind of you know, devolve into things that don't really mean a lot for developers and these applications. What happens now is that if a user holds funds on Polygon but can spend it on OP, the user is actually going to come to you and come to your app instead of you going chasing users, chasing liquidity by trying to build on all these different chains. So, so far we've seen you know, people go to Uniswap, fork the code base, deploy it on a new chain, and become the Uniswap of that chain. And that was some sort of moat. But now that moat will not exist, because the user can actually go to Uniswap and do whatever they were doing on this new chain right there, even if Uniswap doesn't support it. 
as long as they have the assets, they can start using it on any chain that they want. So this artificial mode that people have of being like the Uniswap of BSC or, uh, I don't know, the Aave of Mantle starts to go away. And for the, for the likes of Aave and Uniswap and all of these different people, maybe on some of the other more casual apps, everyone would have to build their own version of uh, like maintain and deploy versions of their applications on all of these different chains. Like you have Aave on Arbitrum, Aave on Optimism, and all of these things. Because if you don't do it, someone else will. And so which is why people have to end up doing all of these sorts of things, which you know, is highly inefficient. So now, developers actually will get to focus on their core value proposition, pick the chain that they want to build on, and just deploy in one place, and the users will come to you and start using you, because essentially chain abstraction makes this possible. So now that we've sort of established what, what is possible for developers and these apps, without needing to you know, go and build the same instance of this app on all these different chains, what does it mean for the chains themselves and all these TVL games that get played? So chains typically end up you know, attracting users by bootstrapping liquidity and you know, having driving usage essentially by, through incentives. So a new chain launches, there is the promise of you know, an airdrop, and you come and start using all the apps that are built on this thing. And as we all know, that doesn't really last very long. As long as once the airdrop is done, that game is over, right? But so what's going to change? This is probably the, my, personally, my hottest take is that chains essentially will become commodity. This is the longest tail side effect of chain abstraction. So this superiority of chains, born out of being able to bootstrap this initial liquidity, dies out. So essentially what will happen is the general purpose chains, maybe there'll be one, two, three of them that remain, but everyone else will need to actually start specializing. Because if you don't specialize, you're really not going to make it. And by specialization, there are things like, you know, you need to have techni technological superiority, you know, things like be faster, cheaper, more decentralized, et cetera, to be able to attract users and developers. You need to have feature set specialization, you know, your private bit design, you're able to kind of provide a different way of unlocking new liquidity, those sorts of things. Or you provide capital or strategic benefits. You help people bootstrap communities, you give access to large networks which help these sort of businesses do new things, or you just you know, throw money at them, whatever it may be, right? So that's because developers will now start to build where it makes sense for them, where there is, where they're able to kind of, uh, you know, meet their technological business needs. Everything else becomes completely unnecessary uh, for a developer and their app. And essentially, overall value starts to accrue more on the app layer and less on the uh, chain layer. So you're now going to see this transition where now users interacting with chains will, will basically transform into users interacting with apps and the apps interacting with the chains. And that, I think, is, is probably the better way for this ecosystem to evolve over a longer period of time, where users are not directly linked to chains, and chains itself move into the background and this is what we can make possible. So yeah, I mean, I hope you liked it. I'm going to be around here for the rest of the day. Happy to talk about chain abstraction or anything else.